Hey, I got a question about the negative intercept for the quantity or, or x-intercept um, for the supply curve, and I just wanted to address it real quickly. Um, first of all, let's remember that you know this is a theory which um, is mathematical and orderly, and that's not the same as the real world, which is not orderly, um, and you know lots of things are different. Uh, whenever we do things like this, it's an attempt to uh, give ourselves a way of talking about something um, more clearly and from a more structured point of view. Um, and your question is kind of hitting at that. Um, obviously, the idea of negative supply, well, that's, that's not realistic. A debate that kind of exists amongst um, at least economics teachers, I, I won't state any further than that, um, some economics teachers feel like putting an intercept or even when you draw the supply or demand curves uh, to connect them to the, the axes, um, some, some economics teachers feel that that's not appropriate to do. And I, I kind of fall on that side. Um, so let me show you why. Um, if we think about the supply curve, and this one has a negative Q intercept because, you know, because it intersects the, uh, uh, intercepts the price, uh, <laughs> axis uh, at a positive price, uh, that means its, its Q intercept is over here to the left somewhere, negative. Um, and this one has a positive uh, Q intercept right here. Um, well, if we think about the intercepts on their own, well, we're starting to get away from what we're trying to do with the theory of supply, which is to make a relationship between price and quantity. And here we have some price, but zero quantity. So there's no relationship or not much of one. And here we have zero price and some quantity. So likewise, um, there's, there's not really a relationship being explored there. Uh, so what can we say about them? Well, we can say that here, there's some positive price that has to exist before we can supply uh, any. And you might go, well, isn't that true of everything? Well, maybe and maybe not. We'll see more about that in a moment. Uh, over here, again, we're saying that some quantity exists um, even if the price is zero. And that kind of connects to our idea of free goods like sunshine or, or air, oxygen. Um, the difference there is that I would probably draw the supply curve as perfectly vertical, saying that here's the quantity of sunshine, uh, and it doesn't really matter what the price might be. So here the supply curve has a positive slope uh, rather than just vertical. Um, so maybe there's something else there. Um, and that's really why we do use different intercepts is that if we start to talk about a little bit higher than zero price or a little bit higher than zero quantity, um, we can discuss something a little bit more fully. So for example, here, what this probably represents is some amount of startup costs that have to be covered um, before we can supply any at all. Um, and you know, it's a little bit silly. I mean, if you're going to start a car factory, uh, you know, this is going to be I, I suppose millions of dollars, uh, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. And obviously we're not going to pass that price on to the very first customer. So oftentimes those startup costs um, are part of the reason that we have finance and, and that's a whole different discussion. But again, that kind of allows us to talk about that uh, by pointing this out. Um, so again, here we can see, all right, well, there's some price and uh, you know, the, the quantity you know, before we can produce the very first one, the price has to be maybe a lot higher than zero. Um, anyway, and then here with uh, the positive Q intercept, um, what we can be pointing out here is that, yeah, there's a lot of these things, and to produce a little bit more, I don't need much of a price. So I can produce all of these, you know, however, you know, maybe this is thousands or millions, I can produce this many of those even if the price is very low. Now keep in mind another problem here is that we have a straight line demand curve. So we might argue that, you know, with a curved demand curve that, uh, sorry, supply curve, um, we might argue that with a curved supply curve that everything is going to start from, you know, uh, here and then curve up this way. That's fine. And again, that's a limitation of the model and it kind of goes beyond what we're trying to um, communicate here.